This is the Schrodinger equation in three dimensions. This red symbol here is the wave function, which contains all the information you need to describe the behavior of the particle you are using this equation for. The wave function is a function of space and time and is complex valued. It's a function of a vector r and the time t and yields a magnitude and a phase. In other words, the wave function maps the time and position of a particle to a complex valued number. Pay attention that the position vector r can be represented in different coordinate systems so we can solve the equation in a more efficient way if possible. Now look at this magnitude here. It's a square multiplied by an infinitesimal volume of space shows the probability of finding the particle in this part of the space. And an integral over all space must yield 1 because the particle must be somewhere in the space. In the Schrodinger equation, we have two kinds of evolutions, time evolution and position evolution of the wave function, in which the position evolution can be written as the sum of second order partial derivatives in different dimensions. The general solution for this equation consists of three important parts. First, a time-dependent component that shows the wave function's evolution in time and is an exponential function that includes different possible energies the system can be in. Second, a time-independent component which shows the state of the system for each energy E end and should be calculated using this equation. And last but not the least, a coefficient which corresponds to each energy and the state we talked about earlier each Cn is a kind of probability amplitude and is complex valued, and if we multiply it by its conjugate, it shows the probability of the particle to be in a certain energy and state. Now that we know how to find a solution to the Schrodinger equation, what we need to do is to find possible solutions to the time-independent Schrodinger equation. By solving this equation, we expect to find n energy values and n states which are the particle's different possible energy and states. Pay attention that in this case, we have supposed that the potential energy is independent of time. Now, it's time to deal with this guy, the Laplacian. We can choose different coordinate system to tackle this problem. The Laplacian in these coordinates is written like this. As you'll see soon, this one is the best choice, although it seems a little bit scary. Deriving this spherical formula for the Laplacian takes a lot of time and effort. So let's see it as a complicated yet useful tool and see how it can help us. There are three coordinates r, theta, and phi. For each one, we have 1 over r squared. Now, we multiply r, theta, and phi with sine to the power of 0, sine to the power of 1, and sine to the power of 2, respectively. Now multiply by partial derivatives and finally find any sign of these coordinates in the denominator and put them in the parentheses multiplied by another partial derivative. With all that said, you don't need to memorize this formula and can check it in any textbooks you want. Now it's time to write the time-independent Schrodinger equation in a spherical coordinates and solve it. Psi is a function of r, theta, and phi. Let's separate the time-independent wave function into two radial and angular parts multiplied by each other. Putting this into the Schrodinger equation, we have this expression. And finally, by dividing by ry and multiplying by minus 2mr squared over h bar squared, we have this equation which consists of a radial part and an angular part, and they both have to be cancelling constants, so the sum of them can be zero. We let these constants be L multiplied by L plus 1 and minus L multiplied by L plus 1. Now we have a radial equation which is only dependent on R and an angular equation which is dependent on theta and phi. We are going to solve these equations in our upcoming videos and see what these equations represent. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get notified about the next videos.